Oluwa Oluwa wa Oba Oba ni o Oluwa Oluwa wa Only you can do this thing there is no one else like you. Oba, Oba, O, Oluwa, Oluwa, Wa. Oba, Oba, O, Oluwa, Oluwa, Wa. Only you can do the things. Hey, there is no one else like you only you can do these things there is no one else like you oh hey only you can do these things so oh. there is no one else like you only you can do these things there is no one else like you we go around the world, oh. only you can do these things, so oh. there is no one else like you. We're searching around the world, only you can do these things, so oh. there is no one else like you. We look around the world, oh. only you can do this thing. So there is no one else, no one else like you. We worship you. We give you the praise and the glory. You are ever faithful, eternally faithful. Lord, we are grateful to you. We give you the praise and we give you the glory. There is no one like you. There is no one beside you. The ancient of days, the one that holds the keys of the kingdom, the one who opened, no man can shut, the one who shut and no man can open. Master of the universe. Okay, more, we give you praise. We give you glory. We give you the honor. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Holy Spirit, take over now, absolutely. Satan, we bind you. We destroy your works. You cannot be here because light is is here. Blessed be your name, O God. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. That was a wonderful beginning. That was a glorious time of worshiping and praising God. This evening, and uh, depending on where you are watching us from, <laughs> I'll be teaching and praying at the same time. You know, we we'll continue our word and prayer together. You know, I'll be speaking on the, the topic when blood speaks. When blood speaks. I'd like you to listen very, very attentively because a lot will be said today. And, uh, and also to let you know in, in advance that I will not be able to exhaust what we have to say tonight, but we'll bite off here and there and we will pray. Tomorrow morning during the prayer mountain, we'll go deeper in prayers, in prayers, in prayers, in prayers. There is a lot to pray. Uh, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 24. Let's open our Bible now to the book of Hebrews. Chapter number 12, verse 24. Hebrews 12, verse 24. It reads, and I quote, and, and to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than the blood of Abel. And to Jesus, I'd like you to listen carefully. And to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant. The word mediator, very important, take note. Covenant, very important, take note. And to the blood of sprinkling, God bless you, sir, that speaketh better things than the blood of Abel. I like us to pray some prayers before we enter into this teaching because we are entering into very, very, very 
serious business in spiritual warfare. And I like us to pray now. You close your eyes, you say this after me, wherever you are, I pray that as we pray, that heaven will open over your life. And what you will hear tonight will fall on good ground and you will take the right actions that will bring about that outcome that God wants us to have in the name of Jesus Christ. Pray this prayer after me. Say, powers that want me to die in agony, expire in the name of Jesus Christ. Open your mouth and pray. Powers that want me to die in agony, powers that want me to die in agony, expire now in the name of Jesus Christ. Mandoko shataliada da da gabayada. Powers that want me to die in agony expire. Expire now, expire now. In the name of Jesus, I am not a candidate for you. Expire, expire, expire now. In the name of Jesus Christ. You will pray the next prayer with me in Jesus' mighty name. You will pray the next prayer with me. Padlock of darkness against my life. Break by fire. In the name of Jesus, every padlock of darkness against my life, break by fire now in the name of Jesus Christ. Open your mouth and do that prayer. Very important, very important. Mandoko shataka siada bakata, padlock of darkness against my life. Esakaruya bakosia damanda, break by fire, 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 break by fire. As you are hearing the sound of my voice, I pray, let that padlock of, of darkness break by fire. Let light break them, let light break through. Imole de okunkunpa. Let darkness be destroyed, dispelled, destroyed, and dispelled by light in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' precious name we pray. The third prayer we're going to pray, embargoes of demonic oppressions scatter by fire in the name of Jesus. Embargoes of demonic oppressions scatter by fire now in the name of Jesus. Every embargo of demonic oppressions, satanic oppression, ancestral manipulations in the name of Jesus. Those that use night to cover embargoes of demonic oppression scatter by fire, be destroyed by fire right now in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the precious name of Jesus. Andoko shokelia da badakata, razo zeketema, imbrogo dodoko shoteketelia bragadakata. In Jesus' precious name we pray. The next prayer I want you to pray. Angry powers assigned to consume my virtue. Be destroyed now in the name of Jesus. Angry powers, angry powers assigned to consume my virtues. Ah, be destroyed by fire, be destroyed by fire, be destroyed by fire, be destroyed by fire now in the name of Jesus Christ. Kandolo brege de gedosa, yakato jekete manikata, robokoto zeke liadabada, lako seke baran yadokata. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Every satanic animal sent against me, ikato jeke liada, be consumed by fire, be consumed by fire. In the name of Jesus, satanic animal projected against my life. Oh yeah, be consumed by fire, be destroyed by fire in the name of Jesus Christ. Mando koshote keliada daga. Senders of evil arrow, receive your arrow back to you now in the name of Jesus. Senders of evil arrow, oh yeah, receive the arrow back to sender in the name of Jesus. Mando koshe keliada daga. Rakato zekete. Can you pray this one with me in Jesus' name? Oh God arise and keep my enemy busy with what will destroy them in the name of Jesus. Oh God arise, keep my enemies busy with what will destroy them in the name of Jesus Christ. Come 
on, open your mouth and do prayer. Mando Koshada, Igadosi, Libra Katosketeka, Iegege Magada, Roshana Na, Izgade Keliaduka, Bara Neke Soba, Yeto Kata, Bara Deketia, Indrose Zemana, Leki Bakurania Deka, in the name of Jesus Christ. You pray the next prayer. Any visitation of darkness into my life now, expire by fire. Expire in the name of Jesus. Visitations of darkness. Visitations of darkness. Expire in the name of Jesus. 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 And finally, Finally, you shall pray this prayer before we continue. Evil elders against my life. Evil elders in my bloodline. Evil elders in my family line. Evil elders projecting against my life. Evil elders, what are you waiting for? Die by fire in the name of Jesus. Die by fire in the name of Jesus. Die by fire in the name of Jesus Christ. Mando kosho keli adabadaka, rose seke teli adadaka tema, imbra gado seke tele geriada, imbro koto seke teli bakato zina. In the name of Jesus Christ, thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Ghost. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for victory. Thank you for victory. The devil is on the run. You will see the back of your enemies. You will smite them until they are gone out of your path and until your testimony is complete. He said, our joy has to be full and yours will be full in the name of Jesus. Tonight we talk about when blood speaks. When blood speaks, before we get enter into this teaching, it will be good for us to understand what blood really is. What is blood? What is blood? What is blood? And I, I know many of us will have different things to say about blood, but I have some things to let you know about blood. Blood carries oxygen, is that which carries oxygen around the body. It means, therefore, that blood carries energy around the body. Blood distributes nutrients around the body. Blood is the sustainer of life in the body. Blood is that living liquid that goes around the body. Blood transports the food we eat around the body. Please stay with me. Stay with me. It's important for you to know that blood helps in regulating body temperature. That blood is so important that if, the, if blood is not regulating, determining the temperature of the body, the body will not function properly. Blood acts as that gate where everything we have to go through in the human body. Blood helps in excreting. You, you, you observe that even, even <laughs> you won't be able to go to toilet if blood in your body is not flowing. Blood acts as an agent of purification. Blood purifies, actually purifies the body system. It cleanses, it clears and cleanses the body system. Stay with me, brothers and sisters. Blood helps to maintain the water content in our body so that it's not too much, it's not too low. Blood is powerful. Blood is relevant to God, and the devil is, a, is always a copycat. And blood is relevant to the negative supernatural. Let me say here, without any fear or any doubt, that blood acts as the security patrol officer of the human body. Blood 
is the house and the hiding place of destiny. As mysterious as blood is, blood is the carrier of covenants, commitments, and documentations of ancestral presence. That is to say, we can look into your blood and tell you where you are coming from. That is to say, we can check your blood and tell you who your father is, and tell you who your mother is, and tell you where you are coming from. We can actually date back to your ancestry through your blood. Blood is the mysterious element in the, in the physical and in the spiritual realm. It's mysterious. It's mysterious. You know, you know one thing? Your unknown past can be traced through your blood. You did not know your grandfather. You only know the name. You did not know your grandmother. You only know their names. You may not have met your ancestors. You, you may have heard of so many things about them, but you didn't meet them. But through blood, through your blood, you are in constant contact with them. This is a serious thing. This is serious. This is serious. Blood is definitely a spiritual currency. Currency. I will say a little bit more about this later. Even the church of Jesus Christ had to be bought by blood. That is how important blood is. It's so important. Now, it is blood that makes people suffer from family and ancestral limitations. It is blood. I'm telling you, without the shedding of blood, scripture said there is no remission. That, you know what that means? Without the shedding of blood, there is no escape. <laughs> no escape. It means that human race, human life is trapped in blood until blood is shed. Is trapped, is in prison until blood is shed. <laughs> blood is the place where blessings and causes are activated. It doesn't matter whether you did not know them or whether they knew you. No, as long as blood is flowing through that line, there is a contact. There is a point. Have you heard the word point of contact? Now, let me say something. The blood is not only protective, but like I said, it purifies and it heals. So if physical blood that flows through our body purify, have purifying assignment and characteristics, it also have a healing assignment. And that is why sometimes they say when blood is too much in your body, they give it a name. There is another sickness there. When blood is not in your body, there is a name for it. It's another trouble. So your blood can, can I say this? Lord, help me here. Holy Spirit, help me. Now, let me say this. Your blood can be the lawyer speaking against you. I repeat, your blood can actually be the lawyer speaking against your life. You know why? Because, you know, you know, you know, because every blood has a voice. Every blood has a voice. It is blood that represents people in the court of the spirit. Now, now, now I'm, going to, I'm going to say some things to us today. I'd like you to open your spirit, man, and get this. Because in the realm of the spirit, there is a court. There is a court of law. There is a court of jurisdiction, of spiritual jurisdiction, that actually takes actions based on the demands of the bloodlines. Now, why do demons even love blood? Why did God have to use blood? And why do demons even use like blood the way they do? It's simple. The devil is a copycat. Because, because you need to understand that demons 
cannot stay without drinking blood. <laughs> and demons can actually stay inside blood. Let me break this down. Demons in the blood can be inherited also. So somebody's blood can be contaminated. Somebody's blood can be infused. Some demons can actually be staying inside somebody's blood. Sicknesses can stay. In fact, science has shown to us that sickness can be traceable to blood. And that there are some issues that can be traceable to bloodline. And when you go for your medical physical, there are things, they, there are questions they ask you. They begin to ask you some questions that borders on the line if this thing has been in your family before. It means, therefore, that some things can be traceable to bloodline. Demonic sicknesses can actually stay inside blood. Why is the kingdom of darkness interested in blood? I can quickly share this testimony with you. Well, it is is not is is a painful one. It's a painful one. This man returned back from work, ate with his wife and children. Some of you have heard me share this testimony before. Ate with his, his wife and his children. In the middle of the night, he screamed out and fell to the ground, rolled from the bed, fell to the ground. By the time they rush him to the hospital, the doctor said if they don't, if they did not bring him at the time they brought him, he would have died. He said, the doctor said there is no blood in his body. There is no blood. My question, therefore, is this: where did his blood go? Who drank his blood? Who took his blood? If he did not eat well before sleeping, we we'll say he did not eat well. He has not been feeding well. The wife wanted him dead. The wife didn't want to give him food. You know some people, women have suffered a lot of things because once it happened, the woman is the first person to blame. Now, now but, she, but he ate before he slept. He ate before he slept. Demons feed on blood. Demons love blood because it gives them energy to do their wickedness. Do you understand that the word blood appeared 447 times in the whole Bible, especially in about 357 verses of the, Bible, of the King James Version of the Bible? That is how important it is. So if something appears so much in scriptures, it means that it has a lot of relevance. Blood is sprinkled in the Old Testament. Blood is sprinkled on the altars. Blood sprinkled on the doorpost. Blood is sprinkled on the veil of the temple. Blood was sprinkled on the horn of the altars of burnt offerings. Blood was sprinkled on the, on the, on the altar of incense. Blood is sacred to God. Blood can, can I say, can I say this? Blood can actually drag you to the court of heaven or to the court of wickedness. When you empty a man of blood, that is when you say the man is dead, he's gone. Life is gone. He's gone. He's gone. What am I talking about? The blood is the first currency. There are three currencies in the spirit realm. Can I share this a little bit more? There are three currencies in the spirit realm. You use them. Two of them is practically operating as a currency. The other one is operating actually not just as a currency, but is as a connecting factor, as a connecting currency. The first currency in the realm of the spirit, as we see in the scripture, is blood. Do you understand this? Let me show, let me share something with you. Let me share something with you quickly. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Blood did not actually start in Genesis. <laughs> Blood did not actually start from when God created man. No. 
Man of God, can we open scriptures now? To Revelation chapter 13, let's begin to interplay with scriptures and let scripture speak for itself. Revelation chapter 13, verse 8. Because the scripture said that the blood of the blood was shed from the foundations of the earth. So where was the blood? Before the earth was founded. If the blood was shed before the foundation of the earth. It means therefore that Calvary did, Calvary was not where blood was shed. Calvary, what happened at Calvary was an offering. Blood was offered at Calvary, but blood was shed before the foundations of the world, before the foundations of the world. Revelation chapter 13, let's open our Bible verse eight. Revelation chapter 13 verse eight. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I'll show, show, show you some, something. Paul said, behold, I show you a mystery. Now, Revelation 13, verse 8, look at what he said. He said, and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life, in the book of, the, of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the earth, from the foundations of the world, slain before the foundations of the world. So, so it means, therefore, that the blood that we are talking about, what actually happened? If blood was shed before the foundation of the world, it means that there is blood in heaven. But the Bible said also that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom. So where do we draw the line? If flesh and blood cannot be in the kingdom of God, then which blood is there? Which blood is there? <laughs> we know that angels, don't have blood. Angels do not interact. Angels don't have the three dimensions of God. Man, only man is the creation that has the three dimensions of God. Man has a body, has a soul, and has his, has his spirit, and has a soul. So only man has that. Let's go, go to First Peter. So blood preceded Genesis. First Peter chapter 1. Verse 19 and 20. I love this scripture. First Peter chapter 1, verse 19 and 20. First Peter chapter 1, verse 19 and 20. Look at it. It says, But with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish, follow me now, and without spot, look at verse 20, who verily was foreordained before the foundations of the world, but was manifest in these last times for us. So, <laughs> thank you, Holy Spirit. So, what happened at Calvary was an offering. See, listen, let me say this to you. Since flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom, I said the question is, is there blood in heaven? Thank you, Holy Spirit. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Spirit. The blood was slain or shed in heaven, offered on earth to man, to man and applied continue to flow, continue to be applied on earth among the sons of men. In Luke chapter 22, verse 20, the blood, the Bible said the blood was poured. Another word for, for poured there in the Greek means offered to us. The blood was offered to us. The blood was offered to us. I'd like you to follow me. Revelation chapter 5, verse 9, the Bible, in fact, let's open Revelation 5, 9. It, it becomes clear to you. The scripture becomes clear to you that, oh, so blood is this powerful. Blood was offered, was shed in heaven, offered on earth, continued to be applied on earth and in heaven. <laughs> so it, it's from the sharing to the offering and to, to the application of the blood. Revelation chapter 5, verse 9. Revelation chapter 5, verse 9. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Let's open our scriptures to it. Revelation 5, verse 9. And they sung a new song, 
saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seal thereof. For thou was slain. You see the word slain. Thou was slain. Was slain. Thou was slain. You were slain. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You were slain. And you have redeemed us to God by the blood, by your blood, out of, oh my father, thank you, Jesus, out of every kindred, out of every tongue, and people, and nations. You see, when the blood of Jesus was shed, I'm talking about when blood speaks, when the blood of Jesus was shed in heaven, God saw Calvary. When the time appointed came, the only begotten son of God himself came and offered that blood. In fact, scripture said there is blood in heaven. He said that blood was offered to man. That is why, this is, this is, this is deep. This is very, very important. This is not something to be rushed. This is very, very important. In Revelation chapter 7, if we can project that, Revelation chapter 7 verse 9, the blood in heaven, look at it. He said, and they sung a new song. And I saw, verse nine, thank you very much. After this, I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number. Of all nations and kindred and people and tongue, they stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now, in Revelation 19, verse 13, Revelation chapter 19, verse 13, very powerful scripture. I am laying this foundation, Revelation chapter 19, verse 13, and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. Where did this blood come from? And his name is called the word of God. Now, there are two currencies, as I told you. The first one is blood. The second one is word. Where's? There are two currencies in the realm of the spirit. The first currency is blood, and the second currency is the word. Is the word. And if you understand this mystery about the blood and about how the spirit realm operates, you will get the devil where he belongs. You will put him down. He will remain down. The scripture said in Leviticus chapter 17 from verse 10 to 14, emphasis will be in verse 11 and in verse 14. He said the life of the flesh is inside the blood. You see why, you see why the devil is interested? You see why demons are interested? You see why they knew? Because to him, he called out the government of the heavens and the earth. He said, for the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given. So listen, look at this. <laughs> look at this. Blood was given to us. Offered in heaven. Given to us. For us to continuously apply them in this world. So blood is given. Look at it. He said, for the life of the flesh is in the blood. And I have given. I gave it to you upon the altar. So blood is a token that when it comes upon an altar, voices begin to come up. You see the reason? Now, now, now you begin to see the reason why a lady, why a man will sleep with a lady. Please listen to me. You see the reason why a man will sleep with a lady? And the lady and the man have gone their separate ways. But as long as that man failed to keep the covenant, the promise that was caught by blood when he had sex with that lady, as long as he failed to follow through with that covenant that happened, it was a covenant, it wasn't just sex. It was a covenant that happened. As long as he failed to maintain and keep to the terms of that covenant, you discover that his life will be ups and down. This is the reason why people, some people's life are up and down. I will still talk about consequences of blood, but not today. 
Uh, yes, not today. We can't go. We can't go that far today. I know already because it's deep. This is why salvation is not free. In your country, ah, ah. but salvation is free. Salvation is free. Yes, it came at a cost, and that cost was blood. <laughs> free to you, but somebody gave. Somebody gave that blood. And, and it can never, another thing I want to say, this is the reason why salvation is also not by force. Because it is given. It is given. And the blood was given. And it can be refused. It can be ignored. And it can be rejected. John chapter 3, verse 16. <laughs> For God so loved the world. He gave. You see? He gave. That was the blood. He gave that whosoever believing should not perish, but have everlasting. So whosoever, anyone who understands Old Testament survey will be able to grasp the New Testament survey and the writer of the Hebrews. Let's, let's look, at, look back at that scripture, Hebrews chapter 9, verse 12. Let's look at it again. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 12. The writer of the Hebrew, honestly... Not so many Christians have understood that. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 12. Hebrews 9, 12. Look at it. Thank you, Holy Spirit. All right. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once. This is a mystery because you need to understand Old Testament of it. Now, in the Old Testament, they enter year in, year out. Every year they go in. And what are they offering? Blood. Blood. Now, but he's talking about Jesus now. He, up, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal salvation, eternal redemption for us. He obtained it for us. But you see, if, if he obtained it for, for us, it means that every one of us will have it. But it was not so. And it is not so. Thank you. <laughs> it's not so. That is where the third currency comes in. That's why I said the third currency is not actually a currency per se. It is actually a means of exchange. That if you believe in the blood and the word, then you bring your the, the, the third currency. And the third currency is faith. Or you can call it belief. Is a connect, connecting currency. It's a transiting currency. You are traveling from Canada. Here you are a Canadian citizen. You are spending Naira. Or you are an American citizen. You are spending uh, dollars. You are a Nigerian citizen spending Naira. Canada, you are, spend, you are spending Canadian dollars. Now, by the time you move to Europe, you will have to spend euros. So you can no longer spend your Canadian currency. You will have to enter into a transiting currency. You will have to begin to spend the currency of the place you are going to or the place that you currently reside. That is why faith in the word of God and in the blood. Somebody cannot just, if you do not believe in the blood, the blood cannot work for you. And the blood you, 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 you may live in denial. You may decide to live in denial. Well, I don't believe in that. I don't believe in that. Now, <laughs> these are no superstitious belief. These are not. That David loved, there are three, there were three, one, there, let me just give one example. David. David was a graphic example of a bloodline operation, a negative bloodline operation. When blood began to speak in the generation, in the lineage, lineage of David, even David was long dead and gone, but that blood began to continue to speak. Do you know David was somebody that loved women? He loved women. Oh, David, David loved women. Oh, yes, he loved women so much. Yeah, he had to kill a man so that he can marry the wife of that man. That, is how David, that was how much he loved women. Do you also understand that when David was to die, one of the tests, to check if David had actually died was what they call the virgin test. So you have to bring some virgins around David and let them be naked. And let the, when they discover that David did not touch, 
the, this man is dead. <laughs> this man is really dead. That was how much. Now you would think that, oh, that's just all what he, he says about what he likes and what he doesn't like. Now he moves over to Solomon. And then Solomon had to gather 700 wives and 300 concubines. It's like I will double what my father did. Not just that is not double, that is not 100 percent. That one should be million percent. And as if that one was not enough, as if that was not enough, the son of, of, of Solomon by the name Abijah was the next. <laughs> Abijah married about 60. He tried, he didn't break the record of his father because he, his father was a different kind of person. So you need to understand that I am not just talking fables or superstitions. I am telling you things that even God himself had regard for blood, that Christians can't be saved. This human race, human race will be lost forever without blood. This is what is speaking against many, many people. Do you know many of you listening to me? Blood is speaking. Blood is speaking. So if you, be, if you don't, you see, that's why belief is very important. Faith is very important. Because faith becomes a useful means of earth change in the spirit realm. Blood and the world, they are major currencies. Do you understand? Let me say something here. Just like the lamb in the Old Testament, the death of Jesus was not enough to save man. The death of Jesus, that Jesus died on that cross, it was not enough to save man. No, 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 no. If he's, do you know that nothing happened even when Jesus, when he was in prison and all that, nothing happened. But when they began to flog him, when they began to flog him, the scripture said that, if, in fact, even in history, the Roman soldiers, if you are beaten and tortured by the Roman soldiers, I watched the Passion of the Christ, and they said, yes, yeah, that was close to it, but yet not close. Because no man can submit himself for that kind of torture. All in the name of movie. But they said it was close to the way the Roman people touched, the Roman army would torture a criminal. Now, when they threw the lash on Jesus, it was inside that whip. There were, there were, there were, there were irons inside that could slash the skin of anybody. So as they threw it, it goes around Jesus, and they drew it. As they pull it, flesh, blood, water will come out. And that was why he said that by his stripes we are healed because blood is involved in the stripes. This is important for you to understand. <laughs> it's important that the death of Jesus, oh, Jesus died on the cross. That's not enough. It was when his blood touched the ground that darkness came upon the whole earth. And God said, what? <laughs> what happened now? What happened now? It was blood. When blood touched the ground, the ground, the earth, the earth, mother earth said, no, I can't drink this blood. No, no, no. This blood, I cannot drink this one. I cannot drink this one. Blood speaks. Blood speaks. You cannot continue your life like this because there are blood speaking. The blood of Jesus spoke. The blood of Abel spoke. What is your, the blood of your father speaking? What is the blood of your ancestors speaking? If anything happened to you now, what will your blood speak inside the generation of your own children? Oh, Jesus. If anything happened to you now, you will live long. You will fulfill the number of your day. But if you are, if you, even if you live 150 years, you still go. <laughs> if after you have gone, what will your blood speak in the blood of your children? What will your own blood be speaking in the generation of your children? Because blood speaks. Blood speaks. So it was the blood that makes the death and the resurrection of and the resurrection of Jesus Christ relevant. So if it was enough that oh he died, if that was enough, then any type or any kind of death would have sufficed heaven for mankind to be saved. <laughs> but that was not enough. It was blood. That was the issue. The blood had to be shed in heaven 
offered on Calvary and applied before man could be saved. Can I say something to you? Man would need to accept the blood of Jesus by faith and believe in it before blood of Jesus can be activated to rescue man. This is a serious thing. I know it's deep, but this is a serious thing. I'd like you to take note of what I'm talking about. This is very, very important. Holy Spirit. This is important. Take note of what I'm talking about. I, I want to pray for somebody. I want to pray for somebody. Can I pray for you? Every judgment that is in your bloodline activated by your ancestry, by your ancestry, as I pray now. I plead the blood of Jesus and I decree now, let the voice be silenced forever in the name of Jesus Christ. Ah, my God. Do you know that some people, the blood, their, their blood is speaking sickness? Oh, it's the same kind of sickness. Some, their blood speaks infidelity. Some, their blood speaks failure. Blood speaks, he has voice, he has content, it carries with it the history and the dynasty of a family and of a generation. This is so. Man lost his freedom because of carelessness, and so the blood of Jesus had to be the way out. It has to be the way out for man. If not, man will remain in bondage forever and ever because he willingly relinquished his power, his authority to the devil in the garden. He will need blood. And God in his foreknowledge understood, knew, because he's sovereign, that this man, something will happen. And blood was shed before the foundations of the world. <laughs> <laughs> I want to ask you a question. What does blood say when it speaks? Mm, what does blood say? Anytime blood speaks, waiting they talk. Sometimes this English is too much. Waiting they talk. When blood speaks, what does blood say? We need to go back to the beginning and check it out because anything we are checking from the Bible, we have to re reference it. If you want to check anything, you have to go to the beginning of it, the foundation of it, Genesis. The first time blood spoke was in Genesis. What did blood speak? Vengeance. <laughs> vengeance. Vengeance. That was what blood spoke. Cain's blood spoke vengeance. Jesus' blood spoke better things. My question again is, what with the blood of your fathers and the blood of your mother, what are they saying? Let him not go. For in this family, nobody breaks that embargo and goes free. Let her not cross that age, because that was the same age that we called the mother. Let, her, let him not, oh my God, that devil is a liar. As I pray now, in the name that is above every name, every evil spoken of through the bloodline, whatever negativity your blood is speaking, I command them to shut up. I command them to keep quiet. I command them to keep silent. I plead the blood. I take the blood. The blood that speaketh better things than the blood of Abel in the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, blood speaks based on the situations and the circumstances of their summer. Oh God, let me look at the time. Do I still have time? No time. Okay, I will, I, will, I will tie it up here and then just pray one prayer. Blood speaks based on the situations and the circumstances of their son. When the blood of, what the blood of Abel was actually doing was that the blood of Abel was summoning heaven and earth to reckon that he died 
the death that he was not prepared for. The blood of Abel was summoning the, the, the order of heaven and the jurisdiction of earth to revenge and avenge on his behalf. Blood, when they speak, they summon. They summon the elements. They summon heaven. They summon earth. They say to God, God, look at me. You ask me to live and die at so so and so age, but this person cut short my life. God, you said I should be married by now, but this guy, this guy broke my heart and he went away. And this, and this person, I know, I know this the story of, of a young man when he was in the university. Can I quickly say this? When he was in the university, he had a girlfriend, impregnated the girlfriend from once time, once and twice, and then the girlfriend aborted for him. And then he ended up after promising and after that get. Aborting for aborted for him, he ended up marrying another person. He went before he got married, went to the girl and they were, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I don't want this to become a big issue, a big deal. And the girl said, No, 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 I'm forgiving you. And the girl ended up also getting married. But the night when the boy turned his back against that girl, the girl uttered utterances. The girl actually lay causes based in lay causes with her virginity that was taken away and utter utterances against the young man and this utterances was founded on the blood that 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 was shed on the faithful night can i say this <laughs> the guy got married and he had children so the devil wasn't waiting for him at that point. But it got to a point. He contacted a strange sickness. The first son contacted the same sickness. The son died. The second child contacted the same sickness. The second child died. The wife, he that contacted the sickness first didn't die. <laughs> uh, listen. When blood begin to summon, blood wait for that person to see the repercussion that he sent him on an errand. He was summoned. And when somebody have a court summon, it is, it is on you to answer to the court. God was the first to demonstrate blood summon when he responded swiftly. To the blood summon of Lib of Abel. And he said, Cain, you are cursed from all living. Whenever blood speaks, everything hears and everything responds. That is why this thing is a serious thing. The devil is a copycat. I've told you already. Every oppression the wicked people do or they did, whether in the Old Testament, the New Testament, everywhere. They copied it from God because they understood that God placed strong emphasis on the spiritual dimension and meaning of blood. This is important. The devil knew that blood is an eternal currency, not just in this earth alone, it's an eternal currency. There will never be a time that blood will not be relevant in human history, even in eschatology. Blood will still be relevant. Even in the war of Armageddon, read the Bible, blood will still be relevant. Even in heaven, the blood will still be relevant. For there are three that bear witness in heaven. The blood will still be relevant. This is important. And that's why the devil uses this to afflict people. This is important. <laughs> Can I round up here? Holy Spirit. The blood of Jesus wasn't just offered only for our sins. Listen. The blood was also offered for our justification. Have you heard the word justification before? As a Christian, I know you have heard, you have heard it, justification. Do you really sit down to look into the word justification. What does it mean when the Bible said the blood of Jesus was not only for our remission of our sin, was also for our justification, justifying you from what? 
What is justification? It means to be declared not guilty. What did you do that made you guilty? Have you asked yourself? Why is this very important to God and to you and to the slave master, which is the devil? Can I quickly shock you? Why is this very important, brother, sister? Because to be guilty brings on a person all the consequences of a summon. To be guilty brings a man into an invisible prison. To be guilty incapacitates incapacitate helpers, your helpers, and you yourself, the accused. <laughs> to be guilty incapacitates the judge who is trying to free you. <laughs> you know why? And this is the worst thing because the judge is like, how do, the lawyer is like, how do we free him? They are pleading your case, but the judge is like, by based on the evidence laid in this court, I hereby made my judgment <laughs> that this person has been found guilty, and so if charge goes toss, and then it begins and it begins, and there are many people that have been sentenced to hard labor. So many people are laboring, they, are, they don't have anything to do. I will tell you later on, when we pray more on this, the signs, how do you know that blood is speaking against somebody? This is the major reason why so many people are unstable. I want to pray with you. I have said some things. And there are more scriptures that I wanted to show to you. But the scripture said, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. For the life of the flesh is in the blood. Man's life is in blood. I'd like you to close your eyes. Let us pray. Let us pray. Who is it that seeth a thing and he cometh to pass when the Lord commanded it not? The thing is in the bloodline. Immediately they are about to rise. He said, no, 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 I'm here. I'm here. Who is talking? The bloodline is speaking. Can I pray for you in the name of Jesus? I'd like you to open your mouth first of all and pray this prayer with me. Say, my father, my father, every voice speaking against me through my blood, through my bloodline, any, any negativity that is speaking through my blood, today, in the name of Jesus, I receive the blood of Jesus. I silence their voice through the blood of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Madaka solia dabakata. Rozeke barandi akata. Yeke leboshu barandi ketezi ando gada. Yeke to zama ladi ede ko shabari ede gedi adabada. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, 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 in Jesus' name we pray. You need to understand that the blood of Jesus still speaks better things. But the blood of 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 your family line, though you are a, though you are born again, you are you have. You are from a family. Now you belong to a new family. You must enforce your new family. You must enforce the legislation of your new family. But you cannot do that when you are guilty. Can you close your eyes? I'd like you to pray one prayer and say, Lord, have mercy on me. Anywhere I have done anything that has incapacitated the judge, and the lawyers and the magistrates that they wanted to help me, but they couldn't. Lord, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy on me. In the name of Jesus, have mercy on me. Look, this is not the time to do both face. Have mercy, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. I am sorry. I am sorry. Have mercy on me. Forgive me my sin. I take the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood upon my life. Lord, have mercy on me. And now the second thing you are supposed to do is to seek for forgiveness. It is one thing to seek for forgiveness from God. It's another thing to seek for forgiveness from the offender, from the offended. 
And then the third thing is to pray dangerous prayers. To pray and bring yourself, use the blood of Jesus and enforce the, the jurisdiction of your new family. Put your two hands on your head. I want to pray for you right now. You see that I'm not praying so many prayers today because I'm keeping them for tomorrow morning during the prayer mountain. I want to begin to make those declarations. Put your two hands on your head. Let's pray. In the name that is above every name, my God and my Father, I bring your sons and your daughters before you. This man, I bring him before you. This woman, I bring her before you. That, Lord, your mercy will speak over judgment. That your mercy will speak over judgment. Jehovah, your mercy will speak over judgment. In the name of Jesus, that wherever the blood is waiting for us, to be activated. Every negativity that is waiting to be activated through our blood. As I pray now, in the name that is above every other name, let the blood of Jesus overrule. Let the blood of Jesus overrule them. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we worship you. We give you the praise and we give you the glory. I'd like you to do something. When, when, when things like this are said, the devil is not happy because the eyes of the people are open and the devil is not happy. I'd like you to say, Lord, I cover myself with the blood of Jesus. Apply the blood. Application of the blood is an eternal thing. It's eternally relevant. The blood was shed once. <laughs> he was offered once. But the application of the blood is at eternal relevance. Lord, I apply the blood upon my life. I apply the blood upon my children. I apply the blood upon my job. I apply the blood upon my business. I apply the blood upon my ministry. I apply the blood upon my health. I apply the blood upon my life. I apply the blood, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. Ah, thank you, Holy Spirit. There's someone here. I need to pray for you. The Lord just spoke to me. Every contamination in your bloodline that has brought sickness upon your life. Oh my God. In the name that is above every name, I infuse the blood of Jesus into your blood now. And I destroy every negativity in your bloodline called sickness. I erase it from that, from your blood and I enforce the blood of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you, Father. I give you the praise and I give you the glory. Blessed be your name forever and ever. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen.